To support the locker room, go to moneyball.com.au and sign up for free today. You pick your starting nine with a $60,000 salary cap and you play for real cash. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am here with the, uh, the man of the moment. The recent tri- score try of one of the craziest fucking tries. I called him Michael Jordan, but his real name is Nathan Ross. What's going on, brother? No, not too much. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, so what, I guess, uh, fuck, what's it been like for you? Um, you're on, so let's say your life's been a roller coaster. Right now you're up here. Yeah. <laughs> what's it been like for you the last few weeks and then in extension the last kind of six months for you? Um, I guess the last few weeks have been pretty surreal getting to do what I've always wanted to do for a living. Mm. Um, I'm hoping that if my life is a roller coaster and it's here, <laughs> I just keep it keeps going up. Yeah. I, I don't want the downhill side of yep. it yet. Um, still feeling pretty good, so I've got a lot more years of football in me. But it's just been uh, it's a hard road to get to where I am, so I'm just accepting and taking in everything of that's coming my way at the moment. Mm. And it's I guess it'd be so like a, such a strange position because you know the Knights are this young side that, you know, the club has been through so much on and off the field. And, you know, your own career right now is, is you know, continuing to improve and, and get better. And yet the boys, you're all struggling together, you know. Talk to, I guess, the fans of what what's that like when your own form is really good, but the team as a whole aren't getting the win. And you know what I mean? You struggle with that. You don't want to be happy, but you do want to be, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I guess we're all performing well in patches. Mm. Um I'm just doing what I'm trying my best to to help help the team, mm. and so if that sometimes comes off as a good individual performance, that's that's all good. But you know, from playing football, that you trade in a, a solid performance um, yeah. for no recognition for your team to get the win. And at mm. the moment, it's um it's bittersweet when you do something that's um that's good. You want to be happy about that, but yeah. then you've got the rest of your team to think about. But there's a lot of guys doing out there amazing things, like against um, West Tigers. That, Young Safidi boy went for 270 metres and wow. made like 10 tackle busts and stuff like that. So that kind of stuff goes unnoticed in rugby league, those hard workers. So mm. they're, they're all doing good stuff in their own individual rights. We just never bring it together. And what's the conversation like? You know, what is the conversation like in the mood of the Knights right now? Is it, are the boys strong? Like, is it, are you strong together? Has this kind of brought you together or, you know, or are you a bit down? And like, because I know what it's like, man. When you start losing and that snowball effect happens, and then you start rocking up on Monday and everyone's like, the jokes are a bit less and the smiling's a bit, you know what I mean? And it yeah. slowly weighs down. What's it like at the Knights right now? Well, it's not too bad. We've got a lot of positive characters and we understand the situation we're in. We're not mm. like one of the big money clubs who can throw a lot of third-party agreements out to try and get yeah. players in or anything at the moment. We're a club that's struggling financially. Like I'm pretty sure we're owned by the NRL. Mm. And we've got a lot of young young talent coming through at the moment. I just know if Newcastle can hold on to a lot of these young guys and myself, um, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we'll... We'll start knocking on the door of the, the top eight in the future, but there's going to be no quick fixes for where we're at at this point in time. The, the young guys need to learn their trade, and yeah. we need to start I was about to say that. What's the, the average age is like 24 or something? Yeah, it's ridiculous. So when we do oldies versus youngies on like a muck around training session, um, the old age is 23. So if you're above 23, no you're way. in the old group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Okay, let's just wait, wait a sec. So just to break this down for the people listening, most clubs do oldies versus youngies, and there is plenty of banter. It's usually in the form of maybe offside touch, you know, uh, the dropout game where you, you drop a you drop out and someone attacks into your line. Yeah. Uh, it might be five versus six or something like that. Yeah. And it usually splits the team down the middle. Usually there's enough guys. And, and the oldest versus youngest is usually like 27 and under yeah. or something along those lines or maybe even 26. But 23 and under for young for youngies, that's yeah. crazy. So you're old if you're 23 in our team. <laughs> that's mint. That is, is there a bit of banter about that? It's like, it's enjoyable. Like, we're, like when the, so you the old guys in your team. So Jeremy Smith, he's a bit older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremy yeah. Smith's a little bit older. Um, he can't believe he's actually in with some 23-year-olds at some point in time. But it's, the, the youth's a good thing for us. Yeah. Because when, when times are hard, I guess, you know, when you're, like when you're a kid, when you're a baby, like, you're always happy and they everyone's just happy to be doing what we're doing at this point in time mm. as, as a job. We're not happy with the results we're getting, but we're happy getting to play NRL football. Yeah, I guess that that, that is a thing on your side. Youth can be a, a very strong motivator, whereas if you've got an older team that's kind of you know, carrying the baggage of a, of a career behind them, it might be a bit harder to bounce back from those losses, whereas youth can be very you know, motivating that the fact that you are enjoying the experience of being there. You know, Yeah, well, we're all creating our own legacies at the moment, so... Yeah. I, 
if you threw in a team of like 28, 29, 30-year-olds who had done a lot in football and now were getting a wooden spoon at the back end of their career, I think that'd be a lot more um, emotionally damaging to them yeah. rather than these young guys coming through that are copying a bit of a hiding at this point in time. Mm. But they're going to look back on these times when they are winning um, games, when they are playing State of Origin, if they, if they ever do represent Australia or whatever country they're yeah. from or they do win a premiership, they'll reflect back on these times and be like, those losses and what I learnt in those hard times have helped mm. me to progress to the player I am now. And uh, how, I guess, I, I don't know where um, Gay Guy sits in the structure of the team. I, I assume he's a leader now. Yeah. But what you, has he been a beacon for you guys of, a, of someone that, look, he's worked through so much over the last six months and he's playing outstanding footy. Is he someone that the, the, the boys kind of I guess gather around as a leader, or what's what's that? Yeah, Dane like? Dane does a lot more with actions, yeah. and it is um, a person that speaks when he feels as if something needs to be said, and mm. you do get that vibe that when he does speak, everyone stops and listens mm. because the knowledge that he's gaining now from playing in such a good Queensland State of Origin team, he's not one of those people that um, gains that knowledge for himself and then he's like, no, no, I'm just going to keep that to myself and I'm going to make myself better. Yeah. He, he wants to distribute that knowledge and help the team. So, yeah, he is a leader now. And, and he genuinely cares about the club? He genuinely cares about the club and he cares about everyone in it as well. Okay, yeah, because I just... Um, it just uh, Knowing Dane when he first came into the Broncos system and, you know, watching him grow as a man and everything that he has been through, you know, on and off the field, it's just... It's so good to see a guy like that... Uh, reap the rewards his hard work is kind of you yeah he's really blossoming exactly yeah. whereas a lot of guys go into their shell when things like that happen and, and that's understandable like we all go we all deal with things differently but it seems like gay guy has as you said blossomed in that hard environment which is really good for him um, back to yourself though so talk about a story man you're, you're, the, you're a guy I relate so strongly to because you know the fringes of first grade are a very dark place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a canyon, and it's like he's he's real life. He's first grade, and then there's a and there's all the first graders that get paid deep, you know, solid coin that can help set them up later in life. And then there's a canyon of dead souls, dead rugby, <laughs> dead rugby league souls, and my soul's in there somewhere. Yeah, I lived in there for a while too. Yeah, you've crawled out, <laughs> so I'm looking up at you. Uh, Leon Bot souls in there. Uh, who else is in there? Some Jackson Nicolo. Jackson Nicolau, he souls in there. <laughs> Jacko. Um, who else? There's plenty of like dead so Michael Bond, he was one of the best up and comers. Uh, man, who else? You know any uh, nearly made it? You know any of them? I know plenty of them, and a few guys that. that um, Probably should have kicked on, but the game yeah. just wasn't quite good enough to. Um, yeah, I'll, I guess uh, it, it's been a hard road, yeah. and, and everyone can say that. But um, some people at a young age of the age of 18 or 17 or 16 get almost earmarked to be the next best thing, and clubs mm. really put a lot into them. And some get um, do get nourished right, and they do become first graders, and a lot of them get pushed out the um, back door. But for me, it wasn't. It was never like that. Uh, my parents divorced at a pretty young age, and so I spent a bit of time on the Gold Coast up with my dad and yep. um, in Sydney with my mum. My old man played like 15 years in the NRL, so I think yeah, it's something yeah, that, I, read that. Um, I, I used to play footy as a kid just because my dad did. Mm. And um, it wasn't until I hit about you know 17, 18 is when I first started um, making a couple of rep teams. Yep, and then um, so I moved back up to Queensland with dad and. Was playing Queensland Cup for Tweed Heads and at, when I was 18 and um, wasn't quite making much of the Queensland Cup. I was playing majority Fogs and mm. then transferred over to Burley and played a year cup there at like 19, 20 and um, got, well, I thought like a pretty good individual performance for that year. Our team came six, but I finished top try scorer in the comp. Yep. And uh, from there... Was this 2010? 2010. Yep. Yeah, so nothing really came of that. And I, I thought my, my dream had died because at the Titans at that point, World Titans Feeder Club, they had two amazing um, wingers that were Kevin Gorn and, and David Mead, who's still going around, and mm. William Zimmerman was the fullback. So they had some good outside backs there. And um, But it's just I just feel like there are so many players like yourself that if there was... We, we, we push all this funding towards these big players and like there is no difference for these guys between 800 and 700,000. Yeah. Whereas 100,000 in that section of yourself 
or obviously it wouldn't go straight to you like you'd split it up between you know i feel like that would be so much more valuable to guys like yourself that if you're a queensland cup try scorer you are good enough to play nrl i don't care what anyone says with enough hard work yeah. So, what was was that frustrating to you? It was a little bit frustrating, but I just don't think it was my time to play NRL yet. Like mm. my life away from football probably wasn't as as dedicated as I am now. Mm. And um, so, from there, I was a little bit disheartened and moved to Newcastle for work mm. and played a little bit of local league down here. And I was working out in the mines, working eight, ten, twelve hour days, and still had a little bit of drive left in me. So. I ended up over in France. So I left my job in the mines and I went and played footy for Toulouse in France. Yep. And um, whilst what, over there... What was the catalyst for that decision? You know, you got a job in the mines, you would have been moving up the ranks, you're doing the eight, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours. Uh, a disciplined guy in the mines or in that industrial system can go quite a long way. I guess it's kind of maybe the same as young footballers who get, you know, in the mines you get paid a lot of money. Mm. And so I was, had a lot of money and... I guess I was developing some bad traits, what to do with the money. So because I had this money coming in every single week, I was starting to gamble a little bit more and I was starting to and go out a little bit more and I spent mm. my money almost friv- frivolously. Yep. And um, I was like, you know what, I, mining's always going to be there. I, I'm going to go see the world and while I can see the world, I'll, I'll see if football can fund it a little bit. Yep. So I ended up in Toulouse and come across... Uh, a lot of positive individuals over there and Guy Williams used to play for the Broncos um, Jonathan Ford I think he played I think Guy played like six games for the Broncos yep. John o. Ford played a couple of games for the Roosters uh, Maloney Vunicesti has just played for the Roosters now he, he was in our team over there too and um, Ryan Houston who played a little bit with us um, he's from New- Newcastle and I guess when you're over in another country you, you kind of bond a lot yep. and we talked about our football journeys and stuff like that and it and after talking to the guys who had played in NRL, I wanted to go. I came back to Australia, got my job back in the mines, mm. and um, playing local league football again. And so, so when you're over there, what was the journey like for you? Was that when you grew to a man? Do you think? Um, no, 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 no. I was still a boy at that point <laughs> really? in time, okay, mate. Okay. Yeah. See, at that point in time, I was still enjoying myself, and I, I'm only just starting to see myself right now. As um, I'm, I'm, I dedicate myself to being a student of the game. Mm, okay. I want to. I've always been able to play rugby league and there's a lot of players like that, but not too many people understand why things happen in rugby yeah. league. Mm. And I'm really, that's what I'm, I think is helping me progress so much at this point in time because I, I want to learn why things happen at certain situations and with that knowledge comes power. So if you've got the athletic ability and then you've got the knowledge behind it, I'm hoping it can bring it all together to become yeah. a good footballer. Okay, yeah, so you, you come back from France. Yeah. And you've you've said to yourself, I want to have a crack again. No, I had all intentions of going back to France. So oh, I've come back. Okay. So I've came. So season finished over there, and I had about six or eight months before the preseason started back. And I was like, oh well, I've got no qualifications. Like all I've ever kind of I've failed at a few apprenticeships because mm. um, I wasn't really dedicated enough to that. And I've worked in a couple of bars and stuff before, but um, my partner at the time was from Newcastle, and we came back here, and I rang my local league club, Lakes, and. See if they could get my job back in the mines. Yep, they got me my job back in the mines, and I was playing local league in Newcastle again. And Rip Taylor was coaching reserve grade at the Knights then, and he plucked me out of the local league comp to play, um, yeah, New South Wales Cup and f- finished the year strongly and got a preseason and um, halfway through, so I was really excited. So I said, France, look, I'm not coming back. I've got a chance to finally achieve my goal. Okay, so you come back, you play. Uh pay for Newcastle local league you do really well score a lot of tries you get picked up out of the local league into the, the New South Wales Grace. Cup yeah and from there I, I, where where are your where's your head that like where's your head there are you starting to think, perking up a bit I've got a chance to be do this again or was it like oh I'm just playing footy and enjoying it it's, in the it's it was still like um I'm just playing football like okay. you know I didn't really yep. respect the situation I had been in yep and um I was enjoying doing what I was doing but I was also enjoying life a bit too much as well mm. so um, yes, yeah, so I did enough to get a, a pre-season with the Knights and um, halfway through that pre-season, um, some people will look at this person as the, the greatest coach of all time, um, <laughs> gave me a tap on the shoulder and said that I'll never be an NRL player. Wow. Well, so well, well. That, that, that would have been disheartening for a lot of people. But So well, let's, let's just hold up. Walk us through how that happened. You know, Where were you at in your fitness, in your skill? Like, What was going on in that preseason and how did the conversation come about? At that point in time... Um, We're I obviously thought, talking about Wayne Bennett, everyone. <laughs> I, I thought I was doing everything that I had to do mm. in order to be an NRL player. And I guess this is why he's such a great coach because um, 
I was, I was bitter for a long time about it, but it's not now to actually understand what your life needs to be away from football in order for you to actually make it to the next level. So I mm. think he saw the way that um, obviously wasn't coming to training on Mondays in the, in the best condition and, you know, I might not have been getting enough sleep or uh, okay. my diet might not have been quite up to scratch. And I'm not going to say I wasn't unfit at all. Like yeah. I was up there with the fitness group, but my dedication to football wasn't up there. And, and there's signs like skin folds and stuff like that. Were they showing or...? I think it's, I think it's more so of... Um, I can't really put it down to something, but I guess that's why he's a good brain because he he would have noticed that at, at that point in time I wasn't ready to be a professional footballer, mm, okay. and um, I was I was bitter about it for a long time. So, so how did the conversation come about? Was it up he just training? made he just made the mid you know the mid preseason cuts, oh, and, okay. then, and that's what he kind of he kind of said he's like oh mate like I don't think this is kind of for you you should go back to maybe reserve grade and local league this isn't um, the NRL isn't the place for where you, where, where, oh, okay. where you're so going. He he kind of said to you, he knew that you had a career outside of football. Yeah, 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 because I was working in... So I just got the pre-season, so I put my... I was working um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights in the mines mm. and then turning up to pre-season on a Monday and doing doing that. But I was also... Um, um, like, I wasn't giving football everything. Yeah, and yeah, so I, I, was, I was at a stage where it was kind of... Um, and I guess in his mind, he's like, I don't want this kid wasting more years of his life continuing yeah, to could, do this half-assed in and out, one foot in work, one foot in footy. And he made the hard decision of saying to you, you'll never play first grade. Yeah, because uh, at that stage in my life, I wasn't ready to sacrifice everything to give rugby league. Yeah. So I was kind of half playing footy and then half working because I was making good money and I wasn't quite anywhere. Mm. And so what I've taken out from that experience was that if you're going to do something and you've you've got to give it everything. 100%. And so, yeah, it took me a while to learn that. But I went back and played for a trial in the Curry. Uh, in the local league comp for Curry this time. So when he says that to you, though, is that in your head? You're like, do you agree with him? As in, oh, at that point, don't. at that point in time, no. Okay. In so that you... point in time, I was like, no, I'm, I'm sweet. Okay. What I, what, I'm working hard, and I'm turning up to preseason training. Like, um, that's extreme. Preseason's hard enough to do on its own, mm. and I was working three, not three, um, thirteen, fourteen hour night yep. shifts in a row, and then turning up to it. Okay. And um, so I thought oh what does he know and stuff like that but um <laughs> yeah now now i completely understand where yeah. it's all where it's all coming from mm. and it's it's like you know a lot of people look at it from the angle of like oh that's such, like it's such a negative thing for him to say but uh you've got to look at it from this perspective there is probably uh 15 other people like you that needed to hear that that never did that lost a lot of years doing what you were doing but he was honest he was honest yeah, and, yeah. He, and he was straightforward exactly r- rather than Oh yeah, mate. You just keep coming along and keep turning exactly, up, and, and you, your you time. might you might just be here for as long as you need to mm. be there. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it, sometimes you need that. You need that brutal honesty. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. Okay, so well, yeah, walk us through it. So you so get, then from there, yeah. um, so I was meant to go back to New South Wales Cup, but I was like, you know what? Like, if I'm not playing, if I'm not going to be in the first grade system, then I don't want to be in the system at all. So I want to play a trial for Curry, and I broke my leg. Fucking <laughs> oh, hell. So uh, yeah. I was. I was out of work for a little bit. I had a broken leg and um, I was just kind of in a bit of a dark place. So fortunately work um, kept me on through that time. So wow. when I came back from, oh, that's why I had to play for Curry. Curry kind of helped me out with the job. Yep. So I came back and um, I got to play with some great characters there and some some great football players, George Ndira, Jesse Royal, Regan Tanner, Daniel Abraham. Like These are all like great first graders in their own right. Mm. And um, playing at Curry with them, like when I came back, we'll come in second last, and then we end up making the grand final that year. And oh wow! We all, all, all just kind of clicked. A guy called Ben Jeffries who played ten years over in the Super League, he was our half, and um, we all just kind of clicked. And uh, talking to those guys about um, rugby league and uh, and about um, like work, and that's always going to be there. Yeah. So you have fifty years of your life to do that. Yeah, exactly. And um, they had belief in me that I should should give it another crack and. Was um, there a, a specific conversation where it clicked for you to go, okay, I've got to really f- make a decision here? Um, it wasn't until I had my son. Okay. And then I had my son and I was like, I can't be a role model and tell him to chase his dreams or to go after something if I'm not going to go after it with mm. my all as well. Yep. Um, Rick Stone rang me that off season while Wayne was still there and um, he had a chat to Wayne and they got me back in part time. Okay. And so um, I was training. At, so I left my job in the mines, one hundred twenty thousand dollar a year job for a twenty five thousand dollar part time contract. But so, so the, to 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 kind of sum that up, not only did you just 
take leave a 120k job to a 25k job you just had a son yeah yeah, yeah. so that's the worst time that you could do that yeah so the was, risk of that is massive so massive. i took up that part-time contract i started studying doing my um, work health and safety certificate four and diploma yep. and so now i'm a qualified um work health and safety advisor yep. which is good because i got my study done but so I was working and studying as a work health and safety advisor during the week, also training a couple of days a week and um, working, uh, training New South Wales Cup of the night time of the days that I wasn't training NRL. So I'd train NRL two, two or three days, depending on what day they played, mm. then train New South Wales Cup. I'd be working on my off days that I wasn't training oh, and um, I'd be, I was working in a pub of the night time. So you were, you were working during the day in your off days you weren't training and then of the night time you'd work Oh, pub. the nights I wasn't training. How many hours do you reckon, including training, were you doing that? Like in that period of time, plus your study, plus your work, plus your pub, 70, 80? Oh, there'd be more. Than that. Yeah, there'd be more. Like I'd, I'd leave when I was I was working at Diana, so I was studying and working at Diana. Um, I'd start at seven in the morning and then finish there at three through thirty in the Arvo, yep. and then I'd start my pub shift of the night time at um, five and work through till eleven, twelve. <laughs> And then if I had to train the next day, get up and be at training at 8 a.m. for um, to get like all... all, all yeah, ready to go. Yeah, ready, ready to go. So was there ever a time when you're like, this is too much? So many times. <laughs> so many times where I thought it was too much. Um, and But Rick Stone, I guess, um, believed in me a lot as a reserve grade coach. And then he went on to become the first grade coach and this that was going to be my... my Third preseason then, mm. and um, oh, so you did it. So, so when, it. I, when I when I went back to New South Wales Cup underneath Rick, um, I broke my jaw in, in a trial game. Oh my god! So yeah. So you so you, in the trial game is in. So you get asked to come back to do the preseason. You're working essentially eighty hours a week. You get asked to do, you know play in a trial match for. Oh, the, played, we played against Mounties. So okay. I played. I played um, against. Uh, we we had an NRL trial the week before, but then. It got separated again. Yep. So a few people went back to the, the reserve grade yep. one and the other people went away. So we played Mianis in the first grade. People went and played um, Canberra and I ended up breaking my jaw in that game. So I was out for 2014. I was out for the first um, 10 weeks of the season. Oh, my God. So like... But chipped away at it, yeah. And we ended up making the grand final. I got full back of the year that year for New South Wales Cup. And <laughs> oh, my God. So, so when you did break your jaw, were you like, oh, maybe I should go back to the minds now yeah 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 I was but um, I still just had like a, I guess football's always been a release for me mm. It's a, it's been a place that um, no matter where you are in life you've got 80 minutes of you know no phones no nothing and you, yep. you get to do what you enjoy and there's a lot of hap- there's, I get a lot of happiness out there mm. so you, you genuinely love playing the game yeah and through my past like I've had coaches that say I'm too small I'm not fast enough I'm not strong enough um, my I don't have good enough vision. My dedication isn't quite there. Now I use that all as motivation to tell the people, the people that said I can't, that I can. Mm. And so that's why I've changed my whole life around. In, like my diet's good now. Like um, I do like my a lot of my own um, prep work. Yeah. Like on my days off, I, I do stretching and movement and stuff like that to make sure that my body and my mind is in tip top condition. Like, like I said before, becoming a student of the game. Like I'll probably do more video than most people. Yeah. Um, you'll see. I want to know exactly what's coming at me and what hand the player I'm coming up against carries the ball in or um, when what his centre likes to do or what, what behind the fullback likes to run. So when you're prepared, you know what you're coming up against. And that's like, for people that are listening, that is not normal. Like, I mean, I never, never did any of that. Like most players, we do video, but it's a genuine team team. And it's also something that people are reluctant to go to. A lot of guys don't like video. They couldn't be bothered doing it. So you study your own and you study your own player and make a genuine effort to, you know, know exactly how the team plays yeah, and that so, player plays. So um, I'm on the wing this weekend, mm. so I'll I'll have a look at what their half does, what their centre does, what their fullback does, and what my opposing winger does. Mm. So if a shape comes at me, I'll, I, I should know what's coming before yep. they even know what they're... Like, they'll call the shape and I already know what's coming. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And that's like that's dedication. So you've taken... So your whole life now is, is footy, like essentially, obviously your family, but then... Yeah. Everything is dedicated to playing the best you can play on that weekend. Yeah, so that I can, um, I want to set up a future for my son. Mm. And I guess all these times of like when I yeah, broke my jaw and I was working other long hours and I was studying and um, I was finding my way back into um, an NRL preseason 
and then um, for having the coach that in Rick Stone yep. um, who believed in you, then he got sacked, and then I thought my opportunity was never going to come. So you, so you, would, so he got sacked in. 2015. 2015. And then Danny Badiris debuted me the next weekend. Oh, my God. So he didn't even get the chance to no, like debut. Yeah. After. And so he's someone who, yeah, I guess for the three years prior to when I debuted, people came into my life who um, had confidence in me sometimes mm. when I didn't have confidence in myself. Do you think that, uh, you know, the divorce with your family has had, you know, with your parents has had a huge effect on that? You know, you needing people in your life to give you that extra little push or was oh. it just a young man just uh, young man things yeah I'm a, I'm a, I had a fairly, fairly like both my sides of my family are pretty stable you know what yeah, I mean okay. so um, it was just a, it was more you were just a young man that never really uh, appreciated what was in front of you when you were younger nah see I, like, um, when I was going through school and that like I have, I've got ADHD yep. so like, I've got a lot more energy than most people mm. and um, when I was coming through school it was kind of like frowned upon to have that and they, yep. they try and medicate kids a lot and um, so, so when I when I was young, I used to have to take Ritalin, Ritalin three times a day until my mum said, "No, no, I'm canning that." Yeah. Um, and, and now I think schools are more accepting of like um, kids. Like it's, it's, I don't think it's a condition. I don't think it's anything bad. It's just so, some kids have more energy than others. Yeah, it, that's and, the thing. I, I think that too, too many things are like conditioned. Like they're conditioned. Like what's the condition? You have a lot of energy. What's, yeah. There's not we can we make out like it's a negative thing. So I, I found it hard to sit, sit in class and stuff yeah. like that as a kid. So I used to be in a lot of trouble in school. Mm. But it wasn't because I was a, a bad kid. Yeah. I was just mischievous and I had too much energy. So mm. I guess the reason why I, I want to show people so much that I can is because they've always said I can't, mm, and they've okay. always told me I can't do things. Uh, okay, so you had a lot of teachers as well saying, so yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. Know, you're a bad kid and you're not going to amount to much. Yeah, and like I never played in the A's or anything at school because I wasn't well behaved in class uh, okay so i was always stuck in the b's b's or c's because oh no we can't like no, yeah. you're a naughty boy so you can't be in the top team yeah man that's it there's been a lot of hurdles <laughs> to say the least for yeah, you yeah so i guess you're 26 when you made your debut yeah what is that feeling like to finally after everything you know your, your injuries your you know taking uh, Eighty thousand to a hundred thousand dollar pay cuts, mm. and to not only do you take a hundred thousand dollar pay cut, you go from a job that is physically not as demanding as footy. So like, like it wasn't very. I was, I was, I was operating machines exactly. on the ground, so I'm, I'm sitting in a seat operating some machines. So it's yeah. not too physically taxing at all. So it was easy money. Yeah. Whereas uh, footy, you've got to physically and mentally push yourself past a barrier. Probably every, nearly every session, like every second session, you're pushing yourself. If you're fair dinkum, you know, there's plenty of people that take shortcuts. But if you're fair dinkum, you are putting yourself through mental torture each session. Mm. You know, so you go through all of that and then you finally make your debut. What, what's the phone call like? You know, what's the feeling like? Where, how did it all happen? I was on my way to work and Danny rang me and Danny's like, oh, because um, I was still working part time as well as training yep. part time. And um, Danny's like, oh, you coming to training tomorrow, Rossi? <laughs> I was like, because like, oh. I was like, oh fuck, man! Like, I kind of, um, I kind of need to work for the cash. Need the cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I was like, I've already trained on Monday, Tuesday this week. He's like, yeah, yeah, but I'm gonna need you in on um Thursday because normally I would um, then I'd work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to get like a little bit of money, and then I'd yeah. um, train with cup. So I'd work pub early in the week, yeah. and then work days late in the week. <laughs> oh, um, and I, and I was like, oh, why? He's like, I just need you to come in here Thursday, and I was like. Oh, all right, man. Because like, I mean, each day is a couple hundred dollars in my pocket. Were you going to be like? I was close to saying, look, I just can't. Like, I legit, like I'm living week to week, man. I'm on the bones of my ass. I legitimately yeah. can't afford it. And then I got in there, and Danny's like, "Look, you're a chance of playing this weekend." <laughs> and I was just like, "Yeah, sweet. I'm glad I came in." But my, yeah, um, yeah, it was crazy. My, my, <laughs> you probably won't believe this, but my car blew up on the way to the training. That, on when I was meant to on the Thursday, and, <laughs> and Ryan Ryan Houston had to come and pick me up. He had to leave TAFE because he was um, he's flying fly out, and um, he yeah. had to leave TAFE at um, seven in the morning to come and pick me up, and then drop me to training. Oh my god! On the one day, you're on the finally one day, going to get there. Yeah, yeah. So I was driving all a, those years. I was driving a bomb of a car because I, I I had to sell my car and stuff because I had a nice car when I was working in the mine, so I had to sell that stuff so I could so, chase my dream. So there's another thing. So when you decided that you were going to give the mining job away, did you you sold you physically sold... Yeah, I had to your, go, like I couldn't afford the repayments of my car after a while. 
So you had to sell that, and yeah. then did you sell anything else? Like you know, no, no. Nah, nah, I was able to do do rent and all that kind of stuff. It was just yeah, I just had to get rid of my car. Uh, so man. I drove like a, a, a nice um, Dodge Nitro black one. So oh really? Yeah, that had to yeah, go. Nice, bro. Downgraded to a um, uh, light blue Holden Astra oh, that had man. plenty of cage Holden on it. Astra <laughs> <laughs> from a Dodge, you big manly car, or a little, <laughs> little feminine car. Uh, man, it's, I mean, these are all like, little things that you, the, you know, I'm hearing slowly, like all these little sacrifices that you don't really notice when you when you say, okay, I gave my job away, and I went to play footy. You don't you don't think of all these other little things like downgrading your car, downgrading your lifestyle. You wouldn't have been able to go out as like you wouldn't have been able to go out. Period. Yeah. So that's I think that's what um, when I when I when it became hard like financially and stuff like that, that's when I realised that. Um, if I'm going to make a crack at this, I've got, I've got to do it properly. Yeah, because, 100%. Like, and that's when I started eating healthy and, and, and not drinking and not, not like gambling anymore because you don't have the money to do it. And I realised how, I guess, how happy my life was without all those other influences in it. Even mm. though I was on less money, I was pursuing my, my dream and um, I didn't have money for all these other luxuries that I thought made me happy where they yeah. actually don't make you that happy. Yeah, they're just, they're just filling voids that yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can be... So can I, was, be. I was using that money to fill a void of the adrenaline and the feeling that I actually get right now doing what I love doing. And so you, you spoke about gambling. Was that a real issue for you? Uh, I wouldn't say it was a real issue. But I was just saying, like, I was earning, you know, um, $1,600, $1,700, $1,800 a week. And, mm. like, I'd, I'd, I'd go out to the pub with the boys and it wouldn't be a drama for me to put two, three hundred through a pokey. Uh, okay. Because I was a, a 20-year-old kid earning that kind of cash. So it's, it's one of those like things, though, that... In it, one hand, out the other. Yeah. I wasn't really respecting the situation I'd been mm. in. But so, it's also one of those things that it could have turned into an issue. Yeah, it could have. It yeah. oh. That's how they start. That's how yeah, you, I, that's I guess start. so, yeah. That's how, like, you know, you, you, oh, yeah, just two, three hundred bucks, like... And then if you're doing that each weekend, it turns into, you know, four hundred bucks. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd hate to know... Um, because like it was almost like a social thing because mm. you you're hanging out with other other young people yeah. that earn that type of money as well yeah so like that would be putting a hundred on the horses or a hundred in the pokies and yeah you don't you don't really respect um like the money you I was given yeah. I didn't respect it at all you think it's normal yeah and yeah. so um and you think you you, you kind of slowly grow an entitlement entitlement to it as in you think that you know I'm t- entitled to this money this is just you know this is the way I live and then you you get that taken away from you. Start realizing that well, it wasn't normal at all. That yeah. was a good wicket that yeah, I was like, on. Yeah, pe- pe- people. That's a, that's a lot of money for for anyone. Oh, like man. that top money would feed a family of yeah. four. You know what I mean? And yeah. I was getting paid that as as a young kid and just just not 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 respecting it all. And man, if so many young guys like that would be doing I, the same thing. I look back now at what I've, I've done, and now if I ever feel like um, making a rash decision, I'm like, no, I've lived, I've, I've yeah. literally lived enough for most people, so I'm happy to make all those sacrifices now. Yeah. And so I'm still earning less money now than what I, I do in the mines, but I'm, I'm getting to do something I love. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll actually get to that, but um, the, yeah, your debut. What was the conversation like when you were confirmed to be playing NRL one Bezzy, game? Bezzy's just like, you're ready. And I was like, fuck, Bezzy, I'm born ready, man. <laughs> I'm like, like I've been, I've been yeah. playing good footy in Reggie's for years. Like, I, I, Week in, week out, I see players that I've been playing against and players that I think I match in skill or... Yeah. It, um, that I, I've always thought that I would get there, but there's been times where I've always believed I would get there, but there's been times where I thought that I wouldn't. When it, when he finally told me, um, it was almost just like a yes. Now it's it's my ch- it's my chance to to show yeah. everyone that I'm meant to be here. Yeah, that's crazy. And you scored a try on your debut. Yeah, I scored a try on debut. So that's pretty <laughs> I mean, good. That's that, 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 it was. Um, Did you just win? No, no, we got we got smashed. Got touch off. <laughs> Forty to twenty or something. Oh, but well, five oh, good well. dragons outfit. But um, no, Sione, Sione, um unselfishly passed me the ball and yeah, I got over in the corner. And What was that like, a feeling when you touched down? Oh, it was just amazing. Like I do a hand signal like that. I do that for my son, Zaya. Yep. So it's so like um, if he ever does look at some old footage or you something, see he'll see it and he'll know it, it in the highest uh, enlightening individual parts of my life. I'm always thinking about yeah. him. Yeah. So it's a sign of respect for him. But you know, like they, they say when, when you're about to die, your whole life flashes before your yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah. Like as I put that ball down, just everything just came past me and it just all it's like everything that you've done every decision you've made everything all, yeah. all the criticism you've been told all the praise you've been given it's all turned you into the person you are right now in order for the next part of your life to yeah for you to succeed man and just put that ball down and i did it like no yeah. one can ever take that away you yeah know, i achieved something that 0.1 percent of 
the population or whatever it is. Yeah, I was just like, even if I do play one hour all game, at least I'm going to get one try. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 100% one million, record. Um, yeah, so actually we'll talk about, you know, speaking of tries, this hectic, <laughs> crazy, crazy try, man. I loved this try. It was such a winger's try. And a lot of people don't, like, a winger's job is to finish. Like, we, we went away from him a bit for a while and we were getting these really big wingers that were to make metres and, you know, to do a lot of hit-ups. But we're kind of getting back to the days of wingers that score tries. And this was one of those situations where most players wouldn't have scored that try, but you were a finisher and you scored that try. Walk us through, you know, what what were you thinking? Well, the whole play, and actually, oh, you can open that, and it's all ready ready to go on your uh, on the iPad. There should be ready to go anyway. Um, oh, it's all slow. Do it play. Yeah, just press play. So see if it works. Hopefully, it works. There you go. So yeah, what are you thinking, and and what's going? Yeah, what happened? <laughs> um, okay, well before that, um, I was I was pretty wide. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm actually I was in front of my center because I was shaping up for a kick because the wing was jamming. So, okay. so I wanted him to roll one in behind, but then I, it got patted batted to Pete, so I run straight back and it got batted to Brendan. And then once I had the ball in my hands, I saw the corner, and I was like, I got I got to high tail it. But then when I saw um, Hoss, he was a bit quicker than I anticipated him to be. Okay. And then I don't know, <laughs> I just jumped, man. Yeah. I, was, I was like, oh, I've got, I have to get this ball down because I think it was third, third or fourth. So the safe route would have been to just take it in, like come off your left, get yeah. tackled, let someone else have a crack. But yeah. um, I decided to to go, and I had to make a play of it. Otherwise, Brownie wouldn't have been too happy. So yeah, as I um, as I as I ran for the corner and I got within distance, it just jumped. And did you physically think, well, as I jump here, I'm going to have to? place my body in a specific position or was it just I just jumped to get high no I feel I feel com- I feel pretty comfortable in the air like when I was um, I used to do springboard diving in, in high school so um, so the, the unknown story you used to be a spring springboard diver yeah yeah, yeah what yeah. are the chances of you being a springboard diver <laughs> it got me it got me out of um, so at lunchtime I'll, I'll quickly on that yeah um, the school I went to um, Waverley College it was in Sydney you had to do weekend sport you spring- had to yeah yeah wow. and so um Springboard diving was the only one that you didn't have to do anything on the weekend. I used to be mad about my surfing <laughs> and that. So, and it's a summer sport. So, yeah. Tuesday and Thursdays in the middle of summer, everyone else is walking around in long pants and button-up shirts and tie, mm. and then I'm jumping off the boards in my speedos. And I was like, that's something that I think I might, have, I want to do that. So I can have my weekends free, and my training is going to be in the pool while everyone else is playing handball, like sweating it out. And um, yeah, I made, made, made the team and yeah, springboard dough. Think about that, bro. All that decisions led to that moment. <laughs> led to that moment. Yeah, exactly. That amazing moment. You will be remembered. It, whenever you, if you never play again, every time someone meets you that recognizes you will remind you of that try. It happens like with, you know, when I scored a try against Parramatta Eels. Is that the people, one where you trapped it and kicked it forward? Oh, that was a West Tigers run. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a good one. one. Um, the four tries against Parramatta Eels yeah, on yeah. the buzzer. That was a different one. But yeah, everyone I meet, you know, reminds me of that. And that's a little bit of happiness that I can always have in me to know that I did that and that's that situation for you and all those things led to that moment you know your par- your uh, springboard diving yeah. led to that moment there yeah. so when that goes down when you put that ball down did you know you I scored? knew I knew it went in yeah because yeah. um I had to like um I kind of look where the line was for where I was put my hand down yeah and um it's just like yeah, it was, yeah. I can't describe how quick it was so it didn't it didn't nothing slowed down it was just do it boom I, I was in the air and then I saw the placement of the ball and then I was standing up. <laughs> so I don't know what happened. And then when you watch the replay on the thing, what are you feeling? Oh, I didn't watch it till like um they've got the bunker up and that and the like I knew I knew I got the try. I was just worried about what happened on the inside. Yeah. But I was just like, um, next job at that point in time. Okay, so you're yeah. just thinking about you weren't thinking about how great that try was. No, 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 it was it was it was next job because we're as a team, Newcastle obviously haven't been in that mm. good of a situation winning games. And yep. um, at that point in time, it's like, let's get the ball back and let's try and get, let's build some momentum here. Man, it's, it was uh, very, it's such a, like, such a good try, such a good try. Well, at least, you, at least you've, uh, not only have you achieved playing in a role in quite a few games now, you've got an exciting try that people, you know. What about the, the after, you know, the messages and everything like that? What was that like? That's, that's, what, that's what I kind of find it, um, that's, what, that's what I'm finding a little bit hard to, to deal with because, yeah. like, um, I'm the same person as I was before I was playing footy, mm. and now that um, you know when people just try and 
like my, my friends are still really good, but now mm. like I, I don't know, I get like a little bit embarrassed in the streets if someone recognises me or something yeah. like that. Like yeah. I, I almost don't know what to say. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, because I'm still the same. Like even if I wasn't playing football, and I was walking down that street. Um, mm. I'm that same guy. Just because I play football, I do that. It doesn't mean I'm anyone different. So yeah, and and you get. I know what you mean. It gets awkward, like when they someone is praising you for something that it's you know. But I don't feel like I should be praised exactly. for. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm almost like yeah. I'm pretty sure that you've done some tremendous thing in your lives, exactly. which outscale this. It just happens to be that mine was on TV, and the, yeah, the, what, what you've been through in your life is is probably just as hard. But no one will ever know because it hasn't been publicised. Mate, everyone. exactly. I mean, that's that's why this show was started was because there are so many life stories that that people just don't know about. Like, you know, the end goal would be to interview just anyone with a really interesting story. But obviously, you got to start where. You're comfortable and sport is where I'm comfortable but yeah it's I, I totally agree with you when it comes to people do amazing things every day yeah. and you never know about them and no. yeah totally agree so yeah I just I don't know like it, it's it's it, it, it's an honor to be recognized and it's mm. extremely humbling but it's a situation that I'm because I've, I've worked like I've, I've been tradesman like uh, uh, to get to where I am like yeah it's not a career where I started at 18 years old and and it's I've been here for 10 years now I'm only just starting to scratch the surface of yep. it all and I find the um, the praise from people that I don't know quite hard to deal with at this point in time yeah that's hopefully you, you will actually hopefully you never get used to it because then you, <laughs> uh, you never you never change um, let's see oh, there was something I wanted to ask you about but I, I forgot um, so yeah looking back on everything now you know obviously you would never sit there and say you've made it but you've played what like 20, 20 games now yeah nearly 20 games 18 or 19 yeah, games so yeah. you played 20 games now you're, you're a fan favourite uh, you know did you, you know, obviously you expected, not expected, but you wanted to play in a role, but did you expect that you would be embraced this much? Um, I honestly think um, that I get more enjoyment from the fans than they do from me. <laughs> really? Like, okay. I, I love I love the fact that um, I get to do what I want, I, like, do what I've always wanted for a living, and, and you succeeding in, in what makes you happy then in turn makes the people that follow your team happy. Yeah. Like it's it's truly amazing when, when you go after the game and, you know, it's upsetting. We've, we've lost a few this year, but just mm. to see the smile on the fans' faces and to think that they've spent their hard-earned money to come to yeah. come and watch us do what we enjoy doing. Yeah. it's I, I get more enjoyment out of meeting them than they... I'm, I'm massive on social media. Like I talk to heaps of people on Twitter, like, mm. you know, like... That's cool. Um, because I want to give back as as much as they, they give to me like if yeah. they can take the time to send me a tweet like hey Rossi um, good try or hey Rossi good game or yeah. bad loss keep your head up like, like what's what's it to me to give up 30 seconds of my life to write back you know what totally I mean totally agree totally agree It's uh, I could not agree more um, yeah you actually just you know kind of rewinding a bit you you spoke about you know you're doing a WHS um wouldn't be called a WHS degree, but you know whatever it was, the apprenticeship. Yeah, yeah, no, I've got, yeah, I've got my diploma and all that in it. You yeah. said, um, and we don't like we can delete this if you want, but you said that you nearly saw your mate part like die. Yeah, yeah, at work. Yeah, what was that like for you? So when, working in underground coal mining, it's a it's a pretty hectic place, and mm. um, you got like crush zones around your continuous miner, and I, I was here, and the floor was pretty sludgy, and that and he was at the front, just as it's driven forward, it's kind of tilted and literally like that far away from crushing him because one one track got dug in and the other one slipped out and um as we're bringing it forward literally like i'm talking so what so what were you bringing forward you were bringing so you got a continuous miner and and you, you bolt the roof and you got this big shear at the front that cuts so it cuts your head in so cuts your tunnels oh, okay so you're, you're yeah. cutting a tunnel right now yeah so the, it was being cut but then the, the floor was starting to get it give away under the tracks so you hop off and then the driver drop um tries to like square it up yeah, and where he's hopped off probably isn't in the best position. It's in a, it's in a crush zone. Yeah, and um, he just because he was on the front bolt, he's hopped off to the side. Yeah, and as the drivers tried to drive a little bit forward, and you, you, you got to throw like um bits of bits of timber underneath yeah. the the tracks to try and square it up, so it's yeah. got a little bit of traction. And as he's throwing the timber under, and he's the drivers driven the tracks forward, it's kind of skewed a bit. Yeah, and the whole like um the shearer has like come into the the rib and literally like. It's hit that far away. So if he was an extra meter in front, that's you know that's 
dead. Yeah, killing him. Far out. Right. So he would have been sheared in half. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like crashed into the wall. Crushed. crushed and these, these are a few yeah. ton machines. So yeah. So, okay. So you were you. And that's that's when I wanted to get because we have a lot of um, work health and safety people that come underground who have never been underground before. Yeah. They've just studied and uh. So they don't really they've gone to it. TAFE or yeah. they've, they've um gone to uni and, and done a degree, but they they don't understand what the environment's like. So mm. it's very easy for them to say come and say, don't stand there, like. It's dumb to stand there, mm. but it's like we're being told to do a job, and the only way for me to do this job is to put this here. Yeah. And so yeah. there's like um, safety is the number one priority unless it gets in the way of production. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm because I'm feeling you. Yeah. So <laughs> that they they need shit done, and sometimes it's just get it done. Yeah. So I wanted to take up work health and safety because I've been in that environment. So yeah. and I'm I'm not one of those people that goes down and be like don't do this, don't do that. This is how it should be done because yeah. 95% of the time when you're working with tradespeople or people who've done this for their career, mm. they know what they're doing. Yeah. It's the it's the minor things that they look over because they've done it so many times. Yeah, yeah. It's like doing up your shoelace. You've done that a million times so you've got your own way of doing it. Mm. 100%. So I, I just kind of just ask dumb questions. I'm like, yeah. oh man, so what's, what's, what's that do? Yeah. It might be like a cordless drill. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's, it's a drill, mate. And yeah. I'd be like, oh, can you electrocute yourself on it? No, nah, it doesn't have a power cord. I just ask questions like that to hopefully get a few things firing in their yeah. heads. No, that's cool, man. That's really cool. Uh, and just quickly, craziest memory, you know, playing footy or anything like that? Any funny memories? I've obviously got heaps of them, but, you know, anyone that you can bring to mind, you know, quickly. <laughs> um, crazy memories of playing football. Like funny, you know, funny stories. Maybe one of the boys did something stupid or yourself did something stupid or on the field you did something stupid. Um, why not? Why not? When I when I was in France, yeah, I did a piggy riddle and jumped into the crowd and like kind of clapped myself. <laughs> oh, you yeah, yeah. I did a piggy riddle. Yeah. but um, nah, um, stupid. No, I don't have it's too right, much. I played in a game where a guy called um, Ben Jeffries used to play for the Titans. He actually he shoot himself. <laughs> ben Jeffries. Yeah, he got, ben he got hit in the guts. <laughs> shoot himself. Shoot himself. Yeah. <laughs> um, and favorite rapper of all time. Favorite Eminem. Oh, bro! Talking about, talking about, yeah, yeah. he is one hundred percent. Like he is number one. I was, that, I was that white kid in front of the mirror, like um, rapping Eminem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lose yourself was, in the music moment. Really, yeah, I was just, I was just, um, I was about to say this. Well, the real slim shade, please stand up. Like no shirt on, like hat backwards. Oh, yeah, it was embarrassing. So, so did you try to emulate it the way Eminem dressed? <laughs> Oh, in front of the in the in my room, yeah, oh, by yourself, <laughs> yeah. That's even worse than doing it in public. Like, <laughs> jeans down a little bit, and no just no way. So you used to pretend <laughs> to rap in the front of the mirror as Eminem, yeah, and I was, I was him. <laughs> on Marshall Mathers <laughs> oh my god so funny just one, one skinny white kid against the world <laughs> <laughs> oh my god funny. and favourite movie of all time bro Shawshank Redemption that's a, yeah, that's a good one that's been said quite a few times yeah it is a good Andy one Andy Dufresne man we could we could do this for ages it's been it's actually been 50 minutes doesn't feel like it eh? nah not at all uh, we could do this for, I've got to get you back on man um, 100% but yeah thanks you so much for coming on brother it's been extremely interesting and uh, yeah, I'll, yeah as I said we'll probably I'll probably get back on anyway so yeah Cheers. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Boom. To support The Locker Room, go to moneyball.com.au and sign up for free today. You pick your starting nine with a $60,000 salary cap and you play for real cash.